Snowtrack's world headquarters just happens to be located smack dab in the middle of some of the best lake running in the Snowmo universe. And that works out really well for the topic of this week's test ride on the all new and ridiculously fast Yamaha Sidewinder RTX SE. Snowtracks TV has already brought you test rides on Yamaha's Sidewinder XTX and STX DX. Let's make this clear from the get go. The archetypical Sidewinder is motivated by what is now known and revered as the most powerful production consumer available snowmobile power plant ever produced. The engine belts out acclaimed 180 ponies all day, every day. However, Yamaha grins when the number 200 comes up. Apparently, extra ponies are available on special days possessing dense, cold air. Let me make this perfectly clear. If you intend to ride predominantly on trails, the RTX SE may not be your best turbo choice. The Yamaha Sidewinder's inherent goodness does not begin to surface until the speedo moves to three digits. The RTX SE is a 129 using the plush coupled slide action skid. At 129 inches, we can tell you this sled is hopelessly unable to solidly hook up and extrude all its formidable power to the snow until the speedo is way past 70 miles per hour or 120 kilometers per hour. When 180 ponies are on tap, the math comes up short when asking a 129 with a 125 lug to grip snow and stop spinning, unless you install a copious volume of traction studs. Yamaha knew the RTX was a lake racer's ride from the beginning and that a very high number of buyers would immediately stud their winders. So here's my point. This sled is about unrepentant max velocity past the C note. In this category, no one, period, who lays down the substantial jing this sled commands will be disappointed. This is the real deal. This is the fastest snowmobile money can buy. So you don't think we're oblivious to snowmo reality? Yes, this sled is virtually identical except for the skis, shocks, and clutches to the Arctic Cat 9000 series sleds, specifically the ZR 9000 RR. As a result of this reality, we did knight the new Thundercat as the fastest production sled in an earlier test ride this season. Here's the beef. The Arctic Cat 9000 series, including the T-Cat and the Yamaha Sidewinder series, are powered by the same 998cc intercooled turbo and reside in the Arctic Cat Procross chassis, called the SRV chassis in Yamatok. So there's more than one fastest sled in model year 2018. The next question you want answered is, which is the fastest sled, the Arctic Cat 9000 or Yamaha's Sidewinder? Most tech heads want to know which clutch combination produces the fastest snowmobile, either Arctic Cat's team clutches or Yamaha's proprietary YSRC system. In as much as we want to give you a definitive answer to this pressing question, we are actually, at this moment in time, unable to say with definitive conviction if the Arctic Cat Turbo or the Yamaha Turbo is faster. There's good reason for this. Arctic Cat's new Laser Machine Team Primary and Boss Secondary are highly efficient at transferring the Yamaha Turbo's power to the snow. Likewise, the all new this year, first ever Yamaha built roller cam secondary and larger diameter primary have had little fiddling time to deal with the nuances of delivering this much power to the snow. The two sleds are so close, when comparing acceleration and top speed, it is dependent on the line pick down the lake or the amount of available traction. We've not spent much time talking about the trail ability of the Sidewinder, so here's our opinion based on a lot of trail miles this season. Trail riding compliance is acceptable on the Sidewinder using damping adjustable Fox coilovers up front and non-adjustable HPGs in the rear. Honestly, we would have preferred our RTX use Fox QS3s. These simple to adjust dampers are currently our favorite shocks on any Yamaha SRV or Arctic Cat Procross chassis. The good news is this, for extra jing, you can order up the RTX LE and get four Kashima coated QS3s. The non-reservoir 1.5 Zero Pro RCs on this RTX SE feature a myriad of clicks to dial in front suspension response. The only real gripe we have with the RTX is the same gripe we have with pretty much all trail-based Vipers and Sidewinders. 
It's these tuner skis. So far, we haven't had much success tuning out the heavy feel they produce on twisty trails. Honestly, there's more work to be done here. While trail riding control, feel, and bump absorption are good on the Sidewinder RTX SE, this sled is, in our opinion, happiest shredding and shrinking lakes using its incomparable top end thrust. The RTX delivers what you paid for in a way this industry has not experienced to date. The sled is crazy fast and in the hands of a capable pilot, it is an absolute buzz to hold wide open. I think it's safe to say that those customers who anteed up for a Yamaha Sidewinder RTX SE based solely on the performance claims Yamaha made about the sled are satisfied customers. When was the last time an OE was that good to their word? If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.